بسم الله والحمد لله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه من ولا اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا رب العالمين اللهم أرنا الحق حق ورزقنا تباعه وأرنا الباطل باطل ورزقنا استنابه والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Okay, uh, just to start off, if I get a quick show of hands of how many parents we have in the room, so just raise your hand. Okay, put your hand down. Uh, how many parents of teenagers? Okay, very good. Put your hand down. How many teenagers in the room? Okay, very good. I just, I just want to know who I'm speaking to uh, because that could affect what I say and how I say what I'm going to say. Now, um, this is not the first time that I've been invited to speak about parenting and the topic of teenagers. And I usually get invited to like a panel like this, not because um, I have teenage children or have a lot of experience uh, in raising teenagers. Actually, I only have one child, he's three years old. Even though he acts like a teenager, he's not a teenager, right? <laughs> but um, I usually get invited to like a panel like this because parents are like, can you just tell us what's going on in our kids' heads? Like, you know, you're young and you, know, you talk to kids and you, you deal with kids all the time and you know, I'm going through this crisis, my teenager is rebellious now and they talk back to me and this and that or whatever and I'm, I'm having a lot of problems communicating with my child and um, things like, I don't recognize my son or my daughter anymore just the way they talk to me. And it's kind of like when someone's world is flipped upside down and they have nowhere to go and then they, they, you know, I'm invited to kind of like give people some answers. And usually when I speak about teenagers, um, I feel like my job now has become, like I spend a lot of my time just speaking to parents about not freaking out, right? Like even, subhanAllah, even uh, Sister uh, Dr. Medea, when she was reading the, the stats, one of the things that I was doing was I was looking at the, at the, at the audience and I was looking at the parents sitting in the room and your body language smoke, spoke volumes. There was like, there was a lot of parents, and this may have been, uh, you know, you may not even have realized that you were doing this, but there was, there was a lot of parents internally freaking out, right? And it's like all the dangers of social media, which are totally valid, right? Um, but the reaction that we have a lot of times is to freak out, right? And there's a lot of people, there's, there's a lot of parents like shaking their head, like, oh, I can't believe it. I've been, you know, I've been telling my child to uh, stop, you know, using their phone so much and, and get off the internet and whatever, and, and I, I knew it. And now that I'm armed with these facts, I can go to my child and be like, look at the dangers, right? The reality is that that is not going to do anything for our children, right? We have to realize that at those teenage years, yes, when you look at your child and you feel like they're a different person, they are very much a different person. They're not the person that you have been raising so far. And look, I get it, like I, I not 100%, but I, I can kind of empathize. Right? My son, as I said, he's three years old and he is like the world to me. And I know like how much time and effort and love I have put into raising him, even you know, like I say, he's only three years old. And when I think about the parents that I speak to and, and when they tell me about the things that their teenage kids did, or what they said to them, it, it just, it breaks my heart because I immediately often like project it onto my son and I'm like, is this guy gonna grow up? And at 15 years old, he's gonna give me lip? Like, is that, is that what's gonna happen? I remember just had a lot when my child was, uh, my son was about a year and a half and I was changing his diaper and my wife is right next to me. And uh, I turned to my wife and I said, do you think this dude's really gonna grow up and like talk back to me? And she's like, yeah, most likely. And I was like, I just, I can't believe it. Like, I wish I could just, you know, like, what, what am I going to say to him? Like, how dare you give me lip when I was the dude wiping your butt, right? <laughs> like, how, like, it's, and, and I, so I get it. Like, I get it when, when parents are heartbroken, right? I get it when they first hear their child say to them, like, I don't want to talk to you or like get out of my room, or why are you always criticizing me, and why are you always nagging me, right? And oftentimes our reaction to that is to like hunker down even more, is to go harder, right? And even, um, going back to some of the stats that were being read, 
Uh, Panel, I think uh, I think you mentioned seventy percent of parents. Um, what was the stat you said? Trust their children. Trust their children, right? So uh, seventy percent of parents trust their children, and then you asked the room, and you said, "How many parents here trust their children?" And like three people raised their hand. <laughs> Were you surprised by that? No. No. Okay. Why? Because parents freak out. Like because not only do parents freak out. Muslim parents freak out much more, right? So maybe 70%, you know, or no, definitely 70%. But I'd be, is that a statistic for Muslims or just? In general. In general, okay. I'd be very interested to see how that statistic um, comes out when, we're, when we look at Muslim parents. You know, I, you know I, I'd, be, I'd be, I don't know, like if, if, if you were to ask me to put a number on it, I'd say maybe like, 10 to 15% of parents actually trust their kids, right? And I say this, by the way, because I deal with this on the daily. Like, on the daily, when I'm out and about, and if I'm, you know, at a, at a conference, or I'm teaching a class, or I'm at the masjid, or whatever, so a parent comes up to me and says to me, like, look, I just don't know what to do. Um, I, I've done this, and I've done this, and I just, I've, I'm, like, I'm losing control, right? And oftentimes, like I said, I have to tell the parent to, like, back off a little bit. There's a couple of things that I always say to parents. I say, number one, and I know this is a hard pill to swallow, but this is the reality, and we have to deal with this. Number one, we have to come to terms with the fact that our children are going to do dumb things, right? It's going to happen, right? As even from a younger age, like we, we try to control our children and this and that or whatever, and you know, as being the parent of a, of a toddler, I have so much control over my child, but I still don't have full control over my child. But our instinct is to want to protect them and shelter them and control everything that they do. But even as you know, a parent of a toddler, I've had to deal with the fact that I, I don't have full control. Right? And as our children, as they get older and as they especially hit that teenage mark, and as they get close to like 15 and 16, where you know, they're, they're growing and they're developing, they're, they're developing their own identity. They're finding themselves, they're, they're transitioning into the, into the realm of, of adulthood, of independence, of being their own person, where they want to have nothing to do with their parents. Especially at that age, of course, we're going to have less and less control. But the more we try to, to hold on to them, the more without, you know, without their consent and if they don't want that the more we push on them the more we're going to push them away right and that and like I said it's 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 a hard reality for us to deal with that right and the fact that no matter how much we try our kids are go they are going to do things that are wrong and messed up right and I wish I could just drive that point home because you know a lot of parents they have this ideal in their mind you know, and, and we hear about the Sahaba, radiallahu We hear about the, the Shabab from the Sahaba. We, we hear about, you know, those young companions, someone like Musa bin Umayr, radiallahu one of my favorite companions who accomplished so much at a very young age. You look at the Ibadillah, Ibn Mas'ud, Ibn Umar, and so on and so forth. They did so much, and it's easy to, like, look at that, right? And, like, we go to a conference, we hear about all these youth that did so much in their young age, and then to, to look at that and then compare our children to that. And then to be like, yeah, you know, I've really failed. You know, my I've failed my children or, you know, my children are just so very far behind. And it's easy to, like, have that ideal in our mind and keep comparing our children to that. And the reality is that our kids are, are different, right? They're dealing with, with, a, with a very different world. They're dealing with, with, with some challenges that are completely foreign to us. And, and challenges, you know, sometimes it's easy to, like, it's, it's easy to look at our kids and say to them, you know, you have it so easy, right? Now, I know that's something that, that all parents say, and, you know, I say this, but I'm like the biggest hypocrite because I look at my three-year-old son, and I tell him all the time how easy his life is. And I look at my son, I'm like, subhanAllah, like, you're so privileged. Like, I, sometimes it blows my mind how privileged my three-year-old son is. And you know what? I grew up a pretty privileged life as well. I grew up in the suburbs, right? I never, I never had, I didn't really deal with some problems that a lot of people around the world deal with. But it's easy to do that, to, 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 to belittle the problems that, that our youth and, and our teenagers and our children are, are going through. The reality is that just because their problems look different, it doesn't mean that they are any less severe. Right? Just because something doesn't look hard to us, it doesn't mean that it's hard for our children. Right? And when parents say, like, my life, like, it was so much harder for us. Well, 
something being hard is, is relative to the person, right? It's relative to who you are and what you've been through and, and what you're going through. And so I often tell parents, number one, my first piece of advice is chill out. Right? You, have to, you have to step back, you have to give them some space, you have to allow them to grow. And I'm not saying, hey, free reign, let your kids do whatever they want, because right? some parents, that's all they hear when I, when I say this. I, like, parents come up to me afterwards and they're like, how dare you tell me to like, never watch my kids and, and let them do whatever, and are you saying that we should allow them to just be on the internet and do whatever? That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is the, the amount that you're pushing right now, that amount, it needs to chill out a little bit. Right? You need to allow, and you know, I was actually very excited for uh, Dr. Susie's uh, talk, you know, treating our teenagers as adults, right? To have, to have the guts to do that. And when I say guts, I really mean that. Because part of treating our children like adults, part of giving them responsibility is relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is understanding that in the end of the day, you can do whatever you're, you want, but it is Allah who has control over our children. It is Allah who decides the piety or the impious nature of our children, right? Things are in the, and that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us examples of the prophets. We have the example of Nuh alayhi salam who was not able to guide his own son, right? This is the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi salatu wasalam, right? So we have the example of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam who was not able to guide some of the own members of his family. Right? His uncle, he, the Prophet ﷺ, wept with him on his deathbed, urging him, pleading with him to say, La ilaha illallah. He said, Just say the kalima. Just say, La ilaha illallah, so I have something with Allah. So I can go to Allah with something and I can seek, your, seek forgiveness for you. But he was not able to guide him. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna ka la tahdi man ahbabt, allaha yahdi man yasha. You don't guide those whom you love. Rather, it is Allah who guides whomever he wills, right? And tawakkul, by the way, by tawakkul, I don't mean just let him go. That's not what I'm saying here. Tawakkul is to take the means that Allah has given to us, to educate ourselves with the resources that we have. And, you know, the Family and Youth Institute, amazing thing. You know, and I think parents need to be more educated today. We need to know and understand what our kids are going through. But beyond that, after that, we have to have a sense of putting things in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take the means and then trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? The time for, you know, like I said, you know, this age, the, the age of, you know, this teenage age, and, 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 I, and I speak passionately about this age, and I speak passionately about teenagers, because a lot of my growth and, 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 and my, my changes in my life, they started when I was a teenager. Because before I was a teenager, I didn't really have any faith. Right? I live my life the way most other people live their lives and you know it's just about you know school and activities and this and that and for me like music was a big part of my life like my main goal in life was to make music and so on and so forth but as I started to grow and mature and really think about life and think about the purpose of life and I'm actually very grateful to my parents for allowing me that freedom right and I know it, it, it sounds weird but it is, I believe it is, it's, it's that freedom that I had to really deeply look at myself and to be treated like an adult, where my, my ideas and, and, and my concerns and what's bothering me is, is just as important as, as an adult. And it started when I was 15 or 16 years old and, and it took me a few years. And it wasn't until I got to college where I really, 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 you know, thought even more about the purpose of life and what happens after death and what is the purpose of everything that we do and so on and so forth. But it was that those teenage years, that was the spark. And I fear some, sometimes, subhanAllah, that we as Muslim parents, we, we dim that spark, we get rid of that spark, all out of a sense of, how, you know, wanting to control our children. Right? And, I'll, and I'll, just give you, I'll just give you one example, you know, and this is not so much, you know, deen, but even in, our, even in the dunya, even in the worldly life for our kids, you know, a lot of times before our kids ever, ever, you know, develop into who they, or, or start to figure out who they want to be and what they want to do in their life, we've already decided for them what their career should be, right? I mean, we all know the whole, like, stereotype about daisies and doctors, right? Like, all daisies want their kids to be doctors, Right? And I, I'm, I am from the generation that saw the effects of that type of parenting. Because I know people who are adults now, 
right, who spent years and years and years going through school and, and med school and this and that or whatever, and now they're 35 or they're 40 and they're married and they have kids and they go to work every day and they come home and they're tired and they're like, I don't find meaning in my career. Like, I have no passion for this. And it begins to affect other parts of their life. I, you know, and, I, and I'll just share here this one case that I dealt with. You know, I was talking to um, this family uh, who the, the parents, both the mom and the dad, both of them were doctors. And they had three children. Two of them had already become doctors. The youngest child um, was in college and, you know, he was studying or whatever. Uh, but they were having a, a tough time with their youngest child. And they said, you know, he's just, he's not motivated. You know, he doesn't take uh, his schoolwork seriously. Like he's not, you know, academically, he's just, and they're like, we got him tutors and this and that, whatever. Uh, can you talk to him? And I, I spoke to him and I asked him, I said, you know, what's going on? And what he said to me, like, absolutely caught me off guard. He said, look, I'm just going to be honest. I'm just going to be real with you. I'm not as smart as my brothers and, as my, as my brother and sister, right? I'm not as smart as my parents want me to be. And I was like, do not say that, right? Because I don't believe that. I said, why? Like, why do you think you're not as smart as your, as your brother? And he goes, well, because they, you know, they studied everything that I'm studying. And it was, it was, it just seems like it was so easy for them. Right? Like, I work hard, like, I really study for my tests and my exams or whatever, and I still, I still don't get the grades that they get. And then I realized, subhanAllah, that, you know, this is not, for, I, I thought this in my head, and I didn't say this to him yet because I had to speak to the parents first before I get in trouble with the parents. I spoke to the parents and I said, look, how important is it to you that he becomes a doctor? And they said, well, you know, we want him to have a, a secure future and this and that. And, you know, it's, it's a, you, know, he, you know, everyone else has done it in our family and whatever and this and that. And I said, look, your quest for your child to be a doctor is destroying him. It's destroying his self-esteem. It's destroying even like his mental, it's having an effect on his mental health. Right? Because now he's at a point now where he, he just believes that there's something wrong with him. When the reality is, and I, and I could see this that he's not dumber than his, his siblings. They're not smarter than him. His strength may be in a different field. He may be way smarter in a different field, right? He may, he may, he may if his parents just allowed him to explore a little bit, maybe he would find a field that he would, that he, that, you know, he would gel with and he would, do, and he would excel in that. But a lot of times, and, and, I, and I spoke to the parents and I, I spoke to him and finally allowed me to say this to him. Because it really, wallahi, it, it hurt me um, to hear this, this young guy say, I'm just not smart. And right? I'm like, yeah, I, I don't believe that. But the point here is, uh, my brothers and sisters, that um, when it comes to our children, and when it comes to how we deal with our children, when it comes to the expectations that we have with, with our children, it's not fair to treat everyone the same. It's not fair to compare our children to other children. It's not fair to compare our children to this ideal we have in our head. And I'll be, I'll be just, I'll be honest with you, right? I'm guilty of that myself. And I really have to rein myself in. Like sometimes I have conversations with my son, like he's three, right? And I'm like, yeah, so you're going to grow up and you're going to memorize the Quran by the time you're six. And then you're going to study fiqh and hadith. Like, well, I'll teach you fiqh and hadith and we're going to have these classes. And inshallah, you'll grow up. I'm like, you're going to have all these advantages that I didn't have. I started studying Arabic, you know, uh, after my, you know, my, in my, in my 20s. And I studied Islam at a, you know, I started memorizing, like so late. I'm like, you, you can do it, right? You're so young. And there's so much that you can do, so much that I didn't do. And I'm like, subhanAllah, I'm turning into all those parents that I speak to. <laughs> right? Like, that's me. That's who I'm becoming. And usually, like, my wife has to calm me down. And she usually, like, says something really provocative. Right? Like, what if he is not interested in, like, Islamic academics at all? What if he just wants to be, like, a regular Muslim, <laughs> pray five times a day or whatever? And initially, it was like, wait, but why wouldn't, like, that's the best career in the world? Right? It's the best career for me, maybe, but not necessarily for him. Right? But as parents, look, I, you know, and I don't, I'm not here to like, just shame all the parents here. Right? I, like I said when I started my talk, I know that all of this comes from an area of, of love and affection. All of this happens because we care about our children. And if there's one thing that I could say to the teenagers in the room, 
Um, I know your parents need to chill out, right? I know that they need to give you some space. I know they need to allow you to grow and mature and give you some space. But at the same time, you have to realize that you are the world to your parents. That they, they and, and this is something, you know, I, 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 can't, I can't explain this to, to, to teenagers. I, I can't do it. Because I myself didn't really understand this until I became a parent myself. Right? There's this one quote I read, which is like corny as heck. But as a parent, like, it's so true. And basically this quote is, having a child is like um, wa watching your heart walk around outside. Right? It's like somebody took the heart out of your body and you see it walking around and, and that's what your child is. Right? And so to the, to the kids in the room, help your parents. Right? I know you feel like your parents are from a different generation. I know you, 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 know, you feel like they don't understand. But just like your parents need to empathize with you to try and understand your plight and what you're going through, likewise, you need to just give them a little bit, right? To understand that, you know, look at what, you know, try to empathize with what they are going through. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa tubi ilaik. Wajazakum Allah khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khaira.